What's up guys, my name is Khan and we're back today with more Railroads Online and today we're going to do some more track building. I uh, I wanted to make some money and I realized doing the line all the way from the sawmill up to the smelter just to come back down to the iron mine is a huge waste of energy. So if we think about it, we gotta go up this 4% line all the way from the sawmill just to get to the smelter just to come down a really, really steep 10% line to get down to this iron mine plateau where we're at. So I spent a little bit of time and uh, I just sort of did a little bit of a change to the iron mine. So you can see we've still got that 10% line that comes down and it splits. But then I've also created another switch off here. These are some really sharp corners, but I mean, it's industry track, so it's fine. These are actually like 30 meter radius. That's as tight as I could make it to actually make this corner. But you can see I put a split there and I put a split here. And we've got this sort of cool little Y junction that comes off here. So you'll notice we can come across here, cross across our own line, and we can loop around the iron mine. And the, the way this is going to work is we could actually use this line to go in and out this way. And we're going to build a line today that goes all the way around the lake this way and ends up at the sawmill down there. If we look at the map, there's nothing on the far side of the lake. Like there's nothing on this side of the lake. So we should be able to build a nice gradual. I'm going to try for 2% or less. And I feel like with 2%, we can just hug the edge of this mountain, keep along the edge here, go all the way down, wrap around this lake, maybe have a bridge across the lake there or across here. We'll see what we need to do and get all the way to the sawmill, which is right down there. And I'm thinking that'll help us at least in delivering products to the iron mine. We'll still have to go up the 10% to get to the smelter, and we'll still have to go down and up the 4% delivering smelter goods to the freight depot. But having this shallow 2% line will let us bring the, uh, you know, the lumber and the beams over to the iron mine much quicker with much larger trains. With Betsy right now, we can only pull four of those small cars up 4%, and I'm thinking with 2%, we can probably pull like eight or nine or 10 of those small cars and just make much larger deliveries, which is gonna, you know, it's just gonna help us ultimately in the end. And of course, when we get bigger engines, all that stuff, it'll be great. And we could use this 2% line as well to get up to the smelter, but you still have to go up the 10% death line. And uh, I know a lot of people were saying, well, you have that 8% ramp on the one side, and that's true, but it's still 10% up that final bridge. So no matter what, you do have to do a little bit of 10%, which just sucks a whole lot. So I'm gonna just, uh, I'm just gonna take a look here. I thought about maybe doing another flight with an industry, but I think we have to go straight here. We might have to curve out a little bit. And then we're gonna try and like hug this cliff. Yeah, so we're gonna try and hug this cliff that way and see where we end up. And hopefully we can make a nice clean line here, but we're gonna curve right first and then cut across left. Because uh, the way trains work is sometimes you got to go right to go left. And sometimes, you know, that's just the reality of it. So, of course, my favorite part about laying a new alignment is trying to really figure out the first little bit to get into it. So, we're trying to do like 70 meter turns or bigger so that we can keep, you know, a little bit of speed on it. Um, but obviously, it is what it is. If we have to do 70 meters, it is really tight in here once you start doing 70 meter curves. And uh, obviously, I don't want to be too far off the cliff. But yeah, so we've got this initial setup. We do kind of like an S out just to come back in. Got to go right to go left. And then here, I'm trying to cut in. It looks like I'm cutting in a little too sharp. But we're actually going to like turn. That might be a little too sharp. We should have probably cut this bridge like here and aimed it straight that way. But I think if we turn back from here, um, I might be able to get back over. The wall is kind of a really weird spot. I don't think there was much intent on people laying track around here. So I'm just trying to make this see now if we go... See, that looks... This is looking better. And I think now we can catch back onto this wall. It's a really... It's a really interesting spot to have an alignment, that's for sure. Uh, yeah, we can go, like, way shallower on this. Oh, boy. Somewhere to, like... Come here. To, like, there right and then now we can pick this up with a brick wall and then hug this alignment with a brick wall doing 70 meter turns is that correct or are we too close Pfft, that gets that gets really really freaking close oh my god is that i think uh is the window of our cars gonna be okay we might this might be too close simply because the cars might just smoke the side of the wall how are we doing okay that looks good in terms of height actually we can go grab betsy i got betsy on this line you know what i'm gonna go grab betsy right now we're gonna bring her down here she's got the cars on it let's see if the cars are too close that that looks great um and then we can turn back over around this corner yeah we might this might be perfect but yeah i'm worried that if betsy doesn't hit this we'll be good and and we should be fine to go because that looks super cool. It looks like we're actually hugging the mountain. And the brick kind of blends right into the texture. It all looks perfect. So 
I'd like to do this. I'm not a huge fan of these big steel bridges, but I mean, I also don't see another way to get around this corner, so it kind of it kind of is what it is, to be honest. This is the only part I don't like about this alignment because of how tight everything is up here. I had to put these two switches back to back. So I put the switch stands on opposite sides, but now you've got to remember that the right switch stand, the outside one is for the outside track and the inside one is to go inside. And the problem I have with putting them back to back in Railroads Online is sometimes you grab the wrong one and then you try and move it and you end up moving the wrong one and your train goes in the wrong direction. So I figured that way is a little bit better for that, but it's kind of, it just, it is what it is. It's not really the worst but uh, definitely a difficult situation because from a distance, it'll be hard to tell. But I mean, again, it's industry track. We're not moving very quick. Everything should be fine. We got to make sure we go nice and slow here. That we don't accidentally just run off the end of this track. But this should be 2%. It's so much nicer at 2%. It's going to be a long track, though. Like, you can already tell how gradual this is. And we've got to get all the way down to there. The cool thing about this alignment, though, is the entire time we're running it, we'll see the lake and we'll also see our destinations. So that'll be kind of a... Kind of a neat track, I guess. Uh, let's see here. I think we're more than fine. I think we're way outside the dynamic window. I don't actually know. Maybe it looks kind of close. If these cars make it, I think we're okay with the bigger cars. I'm pretty sure these cars have the lowest... Like, I think they're all the same width as the bigger cars, but they're the lowest... Yeah, I think we're fine. Wait, is that getting stuck? On a hitbox? No. Is it? It's totally getting stuck on that hitbox. Right? Okay, you know what? We gotta... I gotta hold on. I'm just gonna extend this out. Like, a lot. And then we're gonna... We're just gonna check and see. Alright, there we go. Full speed for Betsy. 13... 13 mile an hour. Not really full speed. 14 mile an hour. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They're... They're a mess. They're completely screwed. Oh, yeah. No, that's perfect. That's awesome. That's great. That's great. That's great. No, that's, 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 that's great. All right, well, yeah, no, that's just, just freaking wonderful. Okay, I reloaded the save and I cleaned that up. Uh, I made the bridge a little straight here. It's, it's a little bit nicer. It comes in at 70 meter turns. So I'm going to try and avoid anything less than 70 meters. It's not an ideal radius. Like, we, you know, the bigger the better. But we are also doing, like, you know, a 2% line that goes around this whole thing. So I'm also going to try and just avoid uh, flat up having... Oh, no. Can I please make this... Oh, my God. Can I not make this jump? Is this... Okay, there we go. But yeah, I'm going to try and avoid having any rocks go over the lip of this. I feel like if we're on the outside of the stone wall, we're fine. Um, but yeah, it's unfortunate that the, the hitbox is a little bigger than I would have thought. So that's fine. But we're just going to keep going here down at 2%. It's going to take a while to get all the way over there. So I might just lay some track for a bit. And then, uh, you know, see where we end up. And, uh, and go from there and get Betsy on this line and then hopefully you know be able to deliver like eight nine cars at a time i don't know oh this looks oh that looks so good at 70 meters going back yeah it's gonna be a lot of s-bends to do this track but let's just oh that looks so nice this is this is actually really really cool i'm a big fan of this it kind of looks like it's it's meant to be here like it hugs the mountain and it's just right on the edge of it so that's perfect Oh man, I tell you, this is going to be a wicked looking alignment. I mean, just look at that view. You got the whole lake. We're right on this edge. This is, I like this a lot. This looks really cool. I try to mix in bridges with the stonework. Um, I know if we were doing this in real life, we'd make a cut into the side of the terrain. And then we'd have like a flat spot that comes down. Kind of like on the other map where the devs made those cuts for you. Uh, but because we don't have that in this, I try to put bridges just because, you know, if there was rain or there was a rock slide or something, you'd want a space for the rain to flow underneath. And, you know, like right here, the rain would get all caught up in here. And that doesn't doesn't make a lot of sense. So rather than continuing with the stone wall here, I put another little posted bridge there. It looks kind of nice just to let, you know, the wildlife and stuff. I know it actually doesn't matter in Railroads Online. And realistically, if we wanted to make the best railroads and railroads online we would just use steel bridges everywhere because the steel bridges have the highest height above the ground that you could go so i mean if you just make everything out of steel bridges then uh you know life is easy but for my own realism sake i do like having these little sort of extra bridge sections that are a little bit different and then of course lots of stone wall because uh this is just way too steep for phil 
But yeah, let's keep going. We're not really that far at all. We're kind of, we're getting down in height. Like, we're definitely down, but uh, yeah, it's 2%. It's going to take a while. I think maybe by the time we get over to that shoreline, we'll be close to the level of the, the sawmill. But I'm going to keep going at 2% regardless. And if we get down early, like if we're down to zero at the at the ground level there, at the water level, then we'll just keep going along the edge of the shoreline at that level until uh, until we reach the sawmill. So I'm not really too worried about it. But yeah, ideally, I'd like to, you know, have it get there at the exact right height. But uh, like I said, we need that XYZ coordinate system. And uh, that way we could actually calculate, you know, how much track we need to get from point A to point B. Because you could just do the math and figure out exactly what kind of height change you have. And then, you know, if you know the height change and you know the total distance, give or take, of the track you're laying, then you could calculate uh, exactly how much. I don't think... Like, this is fine, right? This is way outside the window. I'm gonna I'm gonna go get Betsy again. I'm gonna save first this time, so if I reload, I don't have to relay the track, but I think that's gonna be okay. All right, Betsy, don't let me down this time. Let's, uh, let's see if this works this time. Back again. I also thought about it. I got a lot of comments, too, from you guys about what to do when the new industries drop, and, uh, yeah, I think what I'm gonna do is exactly what a lot of people were saying and, and what I kind of did with the wheat farm on this map, which is just... Spawn in a new map, look at where all the industries are placed, and then try my best to mimic that in my map. And then that way I don't have to relay all this track. Because I am really happy with, with a lot of this track so far. And I'm um, happy with the routes we've got. And it would really be unfortunate to have to take all that time and relay all that track for essentially no gain. I mean, you know, I, I understand. I am a little bit, you know, sort of OCD about that. I would like my industries to be perfectly placed with where the dev put them, because, like, you know, I want to play the game as the dev intended. But obviously, you know, if I get it close enough with the right orientation, I think we're okay, just because I, I would like to you know, keep the existing track that I have. And it's really nice that we have that industry placement tool, especially because we don't really know when that update's going to come out. They did say sometime in December, but I mean, it could be, you know, late December for all we know. And uh, I don't want to halt progress on this map just because there's new stuff coming. It would be cool to, you know, expand on it. But so far, this is this is much better. This looks really, really cool. 70 meter turns, nice little S-bends here. We are picking up some speed, but it's only 2%, so it's going to be really manageable for any sort of engine. This is nice. I like the views from this. This is going to be a really, really cool alignment to run really big trains up. That's for sure. I might I might change that fill. That's how they would do it. Like, that's the proper fill, but I might honestly change it back to uh, the things. All right, here's the spot right there. Oh, yeah, we just went by it. No issue. It doesn't even, doesn't even notice that. Yeah, I'm going to change that back to a brick wall. It would be done with fill, but I understand people. It does look kind of awkward, to be honest. So let's we'll, we'll replace that with a piece of brick wall. But yeah, it doesn't. Betsy doesn't care about this. That's perfect. Oh boy, uh, coming across an issue here. Just realized, like if we we might have to start turning this wall out. If we take a look at this, this wall, right? Let's just pretend like this continues around here. We're not actually going to do that. But look at this. We have to now. We're really high up. And essentially, we have to get over to that side. Let's uh, let's do a little bit of an industry scout here. But yeah, see, we're we're up there, and we've got to like. There's no way if we keep following this mountain, we're gonna end up way the heck back there. And then if we were to keep following it around, we'd go around that valley. That's just insane. So we essentially we have to turn here. We've got to start turning right, and we've got to cross this little gap, this little bay, and then we've got to end up on that side. And keep going down. So we're going to turn... Interesting. Pretty much right here. We could actually start... Instead of turning left and following this, we could turn... Although that would be one massive bridge. Yeah, no, we're going to turn... We're going to turn right here. We're going to dodge that road. And then we're just going to go across there. And then come back around. That way we can kind of not cover up the road either. This is going to be an interesting piece of... Uh, piece of alignment here. But it should work. It's just... It's going to be really, really, really tall for a section there in the middle. So hopefully the bridge isn't too tall. I mean, we have that massive bridge in the... In the I don't even know what I'm saying. There's a huge bridge in the other alignment. So, like, really, it's kind of par for the course. So I got a little bit more of this alignment done. I realized, too, we're actually pretty low to the ground already. Like, we're almost at the shoreline when we get up to here. I mean, we got a little bit more to go. It is deceptive, though, of course, because going you know, down in height. It takes a lot of effort, but uh, this little section here is actually at 0% just to clear this little bit of hill that kind of sticks out. And then we're just going to kind of drop down with a little bit of a, a stilted ramp bridge 
at a very shallow curve and get down to somewhere over there. And, I mean, it looks like we're almost at the, at the ground, you know? We gotta go around the lake still. We gotta get to the other side, but it's getting pretty good. So we're gonna go grab Betsy and just continue down the path. But, yeah, you can kind of see right here. This is flat, 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 and then it slopes up to 2% there. And uh, we might have been able to get away with 1% for more of this line. But honestly, I feel like 2% is fine. Up 2%, Betsy can pull 103,000 pounds. Uh, 103,618. And up 1%, Betsy can pull 189,000 pounds. So almost double. So if we had gone to 1%, we would have been able to pull a whole lot more. Uh, that being said, though, if we buy a Shea, a Shea up 2% pulls 197,000 pounds. Up 3%, or up 1%, it pulls 373,000 pounds. So again, almost double um, but, you know, if we have Betsy at 103,000 pounds versus before, up 4%, we were only pulling 49,000 pounds. So, again, double that. So, we should be able to double this train to 8 cars, no problem, and have it go up the 2% with 8 cars. Possibly even do 10 cars up 2%, uh, because we're pulling 103,000. It would be close. It would almost be tonnage up 3%, or up 2% with 10 cars, 10 of these small cars. But we could definitely do it with 8 no problem, and double our train up and uh, be twice as efficient. Now, of course, we're doubling our length because if we're going up 4%, it's like, you know, half the distance of going up 2%. But we were also going all the way up to the smelter before, which was an excess in height that we didn't need to do. And this line is only going to go to the iron mine, which is, you know, obviously where we want to end up. It's There's a lot of cool math when it comes to thinking about trains, but essentially we lose half our tractive effort with double the angle, right? 2 to 4% is half. 4 to 8% is half again, like 8% is 18,000 pounds, 4% is 49,000 pounds, so again, half, less than half actually. But either way, it's really, really cool, and 2% uh, is just chill. 2% will be a nice chill line. I mean, a class 70 up 2% pulls 527,000 pounds, you know, like, it, it, it will be, we'll be good. The Tweetsie pulls 563,000 pounds up 2%, so up 1% it would be a million though. Yeah, maybe I should have done 1%. I gotta stop. 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 We're fine. Fine. We only lost one car. The other one, this will recover. We're good. Not a big deal. I tell you, sometimes I love the optical illusion of track. Like, this looks really, really bad as you step further and further away from it because we're turning right and then we're turning left. But in reality, these are, like, super shallow curves. This is a nice... I mean, it's not super shallow. It's an 80-meter curve into an 80-meter curve. See, from this side, it looks great. But from the other side, it looks whacked. But anyway, it doesn't matter. We're gonna keep going. This is, uh... This is cool. This is, we're gonna we're gonna do another big drop down here with a bridge. And hopefully get down to that road. I have a feeling there's going to be an industry. Well, maybe not, actually. This isn't that flat of an area. It's like a weird little river over... Oh, that's the river that feeds the... Feeds out of the lake, I guess. Should be always feeding away from lakes. If you're feeding towards a lake with no output, you'll run into a problem known as the lake will fill up and the water has nowhere to go. But, uh, you know, cool, cool little uh, fact. Oh, boy. We are in incredibly high up here. Alright, we're gonna just go like this and align it that way, and now I'm I'm trapped. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Yeah. It's insanely high up. It's it's crazy how, how much track you need to get down, you know, 30-40 feet at 2%. That's a lot. You need, what, to go down 30 feet at 2%, you need 150 feet of track? Is that right? No, 1,500 feet of track? To be honest, I think I'm gonna replace this bridge with the, uh, piled truss bridge, the other wooden one that we have. This bridge is more like the kind of wooden bridge you'd have over a really tall area, whereas the piled one is the kind of one you'd have, you know, on a track that's just supported over, like, a swamp or something. And this feels kind of like a floodplain coming off the mountains. So yeah, we're gonna do some piled bridges here. Uh, for now, I'm just trying to actually get the bridge layout. That one I might switch to a piled one, too just to keep it consistent with the track. Not as big a fan of this wooden bridge as the piled one, so... But this is insane. Like, this is ridiculous. Uh, yeah. We're we're so high. It's fine. We're actually just gonna keep it this height and cross... We're gonna basically just keep going straight, right through this forest, and then cross the lake, and then curve right again when we're on the other side. I thought we were gonna be, like, you know, really close to 2%, like, too high up, but actually, now that I see how high we up are still, like, we might actually just get down to even level with the sawmill right when we get there. All right, 
We've made it across that section of the lake now, so we're almost, uh, almost there, and we either have to stay flat to stay up on this plateau, but I think what we're gonna keep going is, like, going further right and go along the coastline and just keep going down, because, uh, the sawmill's, like, the sawmill's almost there. Like, we're coming pretty close to it. We've gotta cut across this last little bay here, and I'm worried that if we don't keep going down, we're gonna be too high up when we get to the sawmills. So I don't wanna stay flat on this plateau, because, uh... It's pretty much like almost at the height we're at now, right? So we just gotta we just gotta keep curving down and to the right with uh, another two percent wooden bridge here. This line's ridiculous. It's just bridges. It's lots and lots of. There's a lot of really low sections, and so we sort of have to just put bridges everywhere. But uh, it's all right. It's gonna be it's gonna be all right. There we go. So we're gonna go somewhere like that. Yeah, that's perfect. And we're now we're definitely into more fill sections, and. Uh, I think this can go honestly just straight. We're sort of making a new coastline with our fill. But uh, that's okay. It is what it is. It looks alright. It's not the end of the world. We could do it all with brick wall. But, you know, this would this would probably be fill. It is a lake. It's not like it's a river. So, you know, with a river you run into the issue where the water rushing by would wear out your fill. With a lake it would be, you know, you still get some of that. But not as bad because there's not an active current. And uh, also this water looks really, really still... So, I think we're fine. It would be really cool. I'm, I'm not sure what's going to happen yet, but normally they do, like, winter updates for Railroads Online, and they put snow on the ground, and I'm really curious to see if this lake's going to be frozen or not, because that'll be kind of exciting if it is. But we're just going to keep going along the edge here with this fill, and we're going to be so low to the water. I love it. It's, it's, we're essentially building a whole new shoreline. Oh, I like that. That's a 70 meter. Yeah, I like that a lot. That's that's so cool. This is sick. We're literally, we are the coastline. That's awesome. Someone made a comment too. I can't remember what lake they were talking about, but someone did comment on uh, the sawmill video where we built that alignment, and they made a comment where there is apparently some lake that has a massive alignment that goes across a huge lake. And I went to look it up on Google Maps, and I couldn't find it. But, uh, yeah, if you guys know of a spot where there is big pilings on a railroad, let me know, because I'd love to go look it up and see, because, you know, definitely in the swampy areas, they've got stuff like this, and it's just really, really cool. It's such a smart way to do it. I mean, I know there was a place in, um, I think it was in, like, Tibet or something, where, because of the way the permafrost moves, it's kind of like, you know, even though the ground is solid, it's almost like the ground's a liquid. And there was a documentary talking about some of the engineers who built those railroads. And they were saying they built the whole railroad up on pilings as if it was a swamp or, or a lake. Because they knew that the ground is so liquid, you might as well just build the whole thing up on these pilings. So that the rail supports itself on, you know, bedrock that's 50, 60, 70, 80 feet down. Rather than actually supporting itself on the surface level that, although it feels solid, is not in fact solid. And uh, that's kind of what we're doing here but anyway we're gonna go this is awesome this is straight across and look at that this is the most ridiculous alignment i've ever seen it's gonna be great now we just gotta y this in to the sawmill and then we're gonna grab betsy and go grab some logs and do just one delivery of the four logs i don't have oh my god this is absolutely perfect see i could build a y realistically the way to do this easily is to build a y right off the load line of the sawmill right then we're we're good to go we build a little bit of a y here we connect up easy peasy um the smart way to do this is to build a y that connects into the main and doesn't connect into the sawmill load line so if someone's loading a really long train we don't foul that line with this nonsense but i think we're just going to connect into the load line because the sawmill is such a fast industry you're going to be loading and then gone you know you're loading and out of your destination you're not loading and wasting around so and at you know worst case scenario too there's going to be a y here so if someone's loading on half the load line you could go the other way if there's space so i think this is going to be oh my god that's crazy that was just 1000 meters versus completely straight i think we do this connect that up to there there we go. This looks this looks insane. Alright, so I'm trying to figure out where we're going to connect this line up. And like, you can see we come in there. Making this corner here would be way too sharp. Like, to come off this turn and go that way. That would be insanely sharp. We could come off this way. Like, we could put a switch here and have that switch go off this way. Which means 
If you were coming from the smelter down the 4%, you could get onto it. If you were coming from the freight depot on the main, you could get onto it. Or you could come off from this onto the freight depot. The only issue you'd have is this load line. If you were coming from this load line, you wouldn't be able to get onto it if there's only a switch that way. Unless this load line also has a switch here that curves left and connects up to itself so you could do loops around this. Because then you can come in here, go through the load. Oh no, then you still have to back up and get out. If we want to do this as a perfect loop situation, we need a, we need a Y on this. Or we curve this further that way, follow the coast more, and come in straight this way and then have a Y off that. Which is honestly the smartest way to do this. So yeah, I'm going to delete this bridge. We're going to build a Y off there and there. So it comes out straight to here and then we'll curve it around that way and connect back up. Yeah, that's that's the smart way to do this. All right, so I think we'll be good here. I built up a Y and then we're just going to come off a little bit like this. The Y is, it was kind of weird. I had to do some weird stuff. Uh, not anything too crazy, but this area has... You know, it's relatively flat, and it's low, and it's swampy, but then there's some random dirt bumps that you run into, like those ones right there. So I kind of had to move some things, uh, but we have to connect from there to there. How steep is that? That doesn't actually look that bad, to be honest. Let's do a quick rough, rough check of roughly what that is, but I think it's actually okay. Let's go, uh... It does have a little bit of a climb up, obviously. We are a little bit low. It's like less than half a percent. Or maybe it's more than half a percent. It is. Is it, is it more than two, though? I don't think so. It is somewhere between 50 and 60 meters, and somewhere between 1 and 2%. You can see at 1%, the rails are low. Or 1 and 1.5%, sorry. 1.5%, the rails are too high up. So it's a little bit of a climb. And yeah, it's not it's not too bad. Um, I guess we could do that at 60 meters and then have it cut back across. But yeah, it's somewhere between 50 and 60. You know, that's 50, that's 60. It's fine. It's not great. I mean, we've got some 50 and 60 meter stuff up there as well. But, you know, it'll get it'll get the job done. At the end of the day, we are still close to the industry. You shouldn't be coming through here at 6,000 miles an hour. I mean, that's, that's just the reality of that. You could, I guess, potentially be coming from the freight depot or be passing through here to the freight depot. But, you know, just like in Derail Valley, sometimes on your main line, you've got some tight corners and you just have to, you know, slow down for them. And that's kind of what this is going to have to be, especially because this is a really sort of sketchy area but yeah you can see I had to put the switch here because of these bumps or we had to go way outside all these bumps which is it's it was it's not a good spot so yeah this is it is what it is let's go get Betsy bring her back see how it works fill her up and then bring her back to the iron mine make some money and now finally I'll be able to buy like you know 10 more cars and uh just grind some cash with Betsy all right back at Betsy crank that brake off make sure we got the right couples that's good that's good these brakes should all be off they are perfect yeah probably need to put some wood in Betsy's fire here we're gonna have to build ourselves a uh, firewood fuel depot at the uh at the um at the depot I guess at the freight depot it doesn't really matter we can put it anywhere honestly you can just spawn one in too and fill up the wood but either way we are gonna need a fuel source at some point here just gonna push off this zero percent section and then we should be able to honestly coast all the way down it's only two per are you serious okay apparently these cars can accelerate faster than a full weighted train even though no brakes should be on that's I guess there's resistance on bestie Betsy's pistons and that whole setup there'd be a little bit of like you know friction between all the different components maybe I don't know Either that or our brakes. No, our brakes not on. Yeah, I don't know. Betsy probably just has more more rolling friction than cars do, so the cars accelerate away. Anyway, we're going two percent. Should be a nice smooth run, and honestly, it's not really that steep. I love how you can see all the way over there. Oh, but you can't see the bridge. That's funny. You can see the fill, but you can't see the bridge part. But it looks like that track just ends. We're gonna have to buy. Like, I want to buy the Shea next, just because we're gonna need something to help us slug the uh the one hopper out of the iron mine so i'll have to buy one of those large gondolas and slug it out of the iron mine uh someone in the comments made a comment about that i'll have to go look it up about which cars are best for moving coal because of their capacity i think it was the large gondola was what they were saying in terms of like the weight versus capacity they can move uh but either way like coming up this two percent is going to be a joke now with any amount of sawmill products going right to the iron mine and then getting the hopper up 
is going to be a pain in the butt. But we could go get the iron from the iron mine, go down the 2% with the iron, and then go up the 4% to the smelter that way. And it would be the longest, most indirect route ever. But technically speaking, we do have a loop right now. We have a loop that goes all the way. Oh my god, there's a tree. God dang it, god dang it, god dang it, god dang it. There's always one freaking tree, and I won't slow down in time. There's no way. Oh my god. There's always a tree. I swear, I walked up this whole freaking alignment, and I checked, and I didn't see any trees. Like, how did I not see that tree? Come on now. There's no way. All right, perfect. Now we're just running right into the sawmill. Doesn't really matter which line we go on. Both of them are wide in, so it should be easy either way. And then we'll drag this all the way back up to the iron mine after we load it, but... Hopefully I didn't forget any more trees. Let's just uh, do a little bit of reg here. A little bit of break. Let's slow it down a bit. Apparently there's a bug with the break where it's either all or nothing. So if you give it like 5% break or 95% break, it's the same. It's just a lot of break. So we basically have to use our break as an on-off switch, which is fine. It just means we don't, you can't really set it at a small level. But of course we could always have our break set against our regulator. So either way, it's not a huge deal. Oh my god, we still don't have a loop at this loading area. I'm actually an idiot. I wide it into the loading line, which is fine, but there's still no look. We need a we need a switch there and a switch here. We need to connect this line up to there if we want a loop. Yeah, oh my god, I'm so dumb. I still didn't do this right. After looking at it from above and everything, I still did it wrong. So it's not a huge deal. It just means we have to push all the way back onto the main, and then we gotta go forward into the load line and then go out. But we need a switch here and a switch there. Like, essentially a switch right after that switch. Somehow. But this would be way too sharp. This would be insanely sharp to do. Okay, I might have to I might have to rethink this. Let me know in the comments down below if you got any suggestions for how to do this. But yeah, I feel like if we did it this way, that would just be an extremely... Like, there's no way. If you put a... You can't put a switch after this and make this. You'd have to put the switch before that and curve this way. Which means you can't load. You'd still screw up your loading. Yeah, no matter what, you're screwing up your loading. It's really just... It's really just... We honestly need... Oh, boy. We need the ones... Like, we need the switches off the main way out there. Is where we need them. We need to build them off there and have the Y way out there and come back in. Maybe I'll do that some other time. I'm not going to do it now. Obviously, this works. But, yeah, now we have to foul the main here. Just to come in and get onto the load line. It shouldn't... Honestly, this shouldn't have been... It shouldn't Y into the loading anyway. The load should be its own area, its own loop. But it means it's got to Y into the main off the smelter on, on that far side and then go across. Which, yeah, I can't believe I set this up wrong. Oh my god. I literally looked at it from above and I was like, oh, we can't we can't Y into this because then we can't get onto the load. But now there's there's still no curve here. So even if we, we did that, we still can't curve that. Unless we bring this out wider, have the plus there, and then maybe we could curve this into a switch here. I might have to redesign this intermediate area at some point in time. I might make it work. I don't know. I'll, I might try that later. We'll see. Not a huge deal. For now, we're going to load up some stuff. We need to bring only one thing of beams this time. Because last time, we brought an extra thing of beams and not enough lumber. So we're going to bring one car of beams, three cars of lumber... And, uh, and that'll be good to go. I can't, uh, yeah, I can't believe I still screwed that up. Alright, last little piece of lumber here. We are out of logs in the pond. Well, that's interesting, so we can do a bunch of log deliveries to make some money. That's good. It's good. Lots of stuff to do, which is excellent. And, uh, I could actually buy a second locomotive and get maybe one of my buddies to help deliver some logs while I continue to do lumber deliveries up this and just make money that much faster. But we'll see. The shark cars are wonderful. The 300s. I think what I'm going to do for the bigger cars, because obviously there's a bigger version of all the small cars, is instead of doing like, you know, 6, 7, I'll do them as the 3000s. So it'll be like 3000, 3001, 3002. Those will be the bigger ones. And the 300s will be the little ones. You know, 301, 302, stuff like that. I mean, the first digit is supposed to be like an identifier for the car type. So it's like car type 3-01 type deal. So I'll see if I can put four numbers. I think I can put four digits. If I can, then I'll have them labeled that way. If I can't, then yeah, I'll figure it out. Anyway, little climb here. 1%. No big deal. Just to get up to the lake level. And then we do this nice, flat, tilted bridge thing across the lake. I kind of want to see this in first person. This is kind of cool. 
Betsy, you are so small. Your windows are terrible. Look at that, though. That's neat. Wonderful little lake. Yeah, Betsy, you're, uh, you, we need a, we need a faster engine now. This is the kind of route that is really, really gonna be beneficial for a big, fast engine. I mean, we've got some curves. That's like a 100 meter curve. You know, when we get close to the track there, there's some stuff there that's like 60, 70, but everything from there on, like, this is all 70 plus, 80 plus. Um, if I look at my sheet, uh, degree of curve, Huh, no, where's the rate? Is there a rate? I don't remember. I don't have the radius graph. Uh-oh. I need to get that. There's a, uh, Heist had given me a while ago a graph that shows the maximum angle of a curve based on the radius of the curve. And I think there's some math you can work out, but essentially you don't want to go above 30 degrees. And I, I can't remember what 30 degrees was. I feel like 30 degrees was 60 meters in radius. Maybe it was 50s. Maybe 50 was 35 degrees. Either way, you don't really want to go below 30 degrees or above 30 degrees, I guess, in terms of steepness. And, uh, yeah, I think it was 60 meters is what that was. So this is a 70 meter alignment. But, of course, we'll see. Betsy's doing 15 mile an hour, which is kind of a joke. It'll be cool when we get some locomotives that are doing much, much faster than that to see how they behave. But, I mean, you can see, no struggle at all. Betsy is spewing black smoke. That is incredibly dark for a wood burner. Well, that's fine. And now we're just gonna just gonna sit here and ride this alignment. We gotta get up there. That's where we're going. We're going up there. And we just gotta go all the way around the lake to do it. Honestly, it might be worth it at this point, now that we have this line set up, to buy the Montezuma. Because Montezuma had a speed increase um, to 22 miles an hour, maybe 30 miles an hour, something like that. I don't know. As part of the update with the wheat farm... There were a couple of locomotives that got speed increases, and I think Montezuma was one of them, which is good because Montezuma is one of the cheap engines. So it might be worth it to buy Montezuma and doublehead Montezuma with Betsy and then pull a bunch of lumber and stuff. Um, what can Montezuma do? Oh, I don't have... Oh, Montezuma. Yeah, Montezuma up 1% can do 119,000 pounds, which is essentially, like, actually better than Betsy. Betsy does 103. Montezuma does 119. So... Realistically, we should be running the Montezuma for this, and we could pull more weight. And then if we pair it with Betsy, we could pull even more weight, but then obviously we'd be speed limited to Betsy's speed. Whereas if Montezuma does almost double what Betsy's doing, I mean, we're just going to do deliveries a lot faster. So maybe we save up for Montezuma first, and then this becomes a speed route, and then we can use that route to make a ton of money, fill up the iron mine, fill up the sawmill, and uh, and then buy more locomotives. You're going to need at least the Class 48 to push out of the iron mine. Like, at least. If it's not the Class 48, then we're probably going to need one of the gear trains. I mean, Shays just aren't even going to cut it up. 10% of Shay is only 8,000 pounds. It's not even like a hopper, let alone the 40,000 pounds of material that's in the hopper. The Class 48 does 51,000 pounds up 10%, which is why I'm thinking, like, that's the first starting point. Because I'm pretty sure one hopper car is close to 51,000 pounds. Pair it with Betsy, which does another 11,000 pounds, and you can push one hopper car with two locomotives. You'd be fine. But, like, I I'm pretty sure that's what we're going to have to do. But either way, I, I think Montezuma might be the next engine. Then maybe the Shea. Uh, what is the Shea? Yeah, Shea's only 8,000 pounds of 10%. But yeah, it'll it'll be cool. Let me know in the comments down below, I mean, what engine you guys want to see. I really want to try out some of the higher speed limit engines, though. It'll be exciting to pull out the throttle and let it actually go up to, you know, 30 mile an hour instead of 15. This is great. Completely dodges all of that nonsense. Yeah, this is a smart alignment. And now we can have two-way traffic as well, right? We can have you come up one way, go down a different way. You could come up the 2% line and then go down and then go up the 10% with your unloaded goods and then go down the 4% from the smelter. This is just such an easier way to get to the iron mine, though. You don't have to do nearly the height. Like, look, we still have to go up all that. Look at that. You have to go up almost double your height, like another full cliff height just to get up to the smelter. That's insane. So inefficient. Such a waste of good transport. Well, there we go. Let's slow it down a little bit so we can do an unload while we're driving. There, it was still going way too fast. Yeah, way too, way too fast. Way too, okay, let's just, let's just calm down. Let's just, that's just, okay, we, that's just completely overshot. It's fine. We're gonna, we'll just, we'll go forward. Yeah, we'll shove down. There we go. Perfect. 
But yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Uh, of course, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. We gotta make some money, obviously. We gotta get some engines. I was, I basically, I did another run when I was offline, and I was like, man, this is, this is very tedious, having to deal with the 10% and only four cars going up the 4%. It's a very, very long run for no reason at all when uh, we're going straight from one industry to the other. So obviously, this is a more direct route kind of nice and much shallower so it's going to be a lot better but yeah let me know what you guys think in the comments down below make sure of course you hit that like button hit that subscribe button and as always i hope you guys enjoy this video and we'll see y'all next time now we go right back down and deliver more wood probably gonna get more cars